in the words of Joe Exotic, we will never financially recover from this. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Sweetbriar Farm. I'm Mike. I'm Kelsey. In this video we're going to talk about what it costs and some of the things to consider when starting a registered Dexter beef and breeding operation on a small farm. So we're going to start by going through some of the infrastructure costs and things that you'll need to get started with cattle and then work our way to actually go through the price of what we spent on our registered Dexters. So the first thing that you need to consider would be fencing and gates. So you can buy some nice gates like this from Tractor Supply and then end up ruining them uh, later on by hitting them with a tractor or your kids hitting them with a the tractor. But we have far more money invested in gates than we do with fencing. We have a 500 by 500 foot square lot, which is about six acres. And the entire property is pretty much fenced in. And I estimate that I spent around $3,000 with all the gates and fencing for the property. The fencing that we use is a field fence and this has a really nice knot in here that does not slide and then this isn't set up right now but I have a hot wire that goes along the top and then midway through so this all needs to be tightened up before I put cows back out here. But I'll put the brand name of this fence in the description, it starts with a B. That's all I can remember right now. And we've picked the perfect day to film this. We have a fresh coat of snow and it's super bright out. <laughs> and I should be wearing sunglasses so I can see. But another thing that you might consider purchasing, and this is something that you could either rent or borrow from a friend, is a livestock trailer. We happen to get super lucky and paid $400 for our trailer which I believe it's about 16 foot long. And then I put another $400 in tires on it. So uh, depending on what type of deal you can get, you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a, tra on a trailer. But I've had this down to Tennessee twice and uh, all around the state of Michigan picking up animals. So if you want to limit yourself on how many animals that you purchase, don't buy a trailer. Um, <laughs> But if you do find a good deal on it, it's really worth its weight in gold. Makes your life a lot easier. You don't have to come up with some rigged up system or you know, beg a friend to use their trailer all the time. But you do need a trailer to haul cattle, um, either haul it to the butcher or you know, just picking up animals. So something else you'll probably want to invest in eventually is a chute system. So we bought ours here used for about $1,500 and it's been money well spent. We run our cattle through it when we need to do vaccinations or somebody got cooled by a porcupine or we need to pregnancy check somebody. It's something that I've been surprised how often we actually have used it and it's a good way to deal with your cattle more safely. All right, so now we'll talk about the animals and the cost of the animals. And the cost of the animals can vary based off your, where you're located um, and the kind of the genetics that uh, the animal has. All right, so. Some terms you'll come across when you're looking at Dexters are polled. A polled cow is a cow that is born without horns, but will never grow horns. Cows that are genetically horned can also have their horn buds removed as calves, and that's called disbudding. Or actual horns can be removed later in life, and that's called dehorning. Also, you'll hear people talk about what kind of milk their Dexters produce. So A2A2 milk is, in our area, something that most buyers are looking for. But when you are purchasing an, uh, the animal and wondering what the cost of them is, it's kind of like you know, getting a job right out of uh, out of college, you know, you might get an offer from a, a company, and you know, you settle on a on a salary, and then you're starting with a couple of other new people, and you're like wondering, did I undersell myself, or did I, or, you know, who's making more money, this person who's got less experience than me, or, or whatnot? So, we paid what we thought were good prices, fair prices, and then what kind of the the market is in in Michigan and in actually in other states too because a couple of our cows came from Tennessee Will you quit licking me in, in 2020 we bought our first Dexter 
temple. So we bought her as a bred heifer. So heifer would be a female cow that has not calved. And she has since had two calves. And this she's on her third. Yes. Right? Yep. So she should calve in a couple months. And we paid thirteen hundred dollars for her as a bred registered heifer. Mm-hmm. She is A1, A2. Yes. She and is horned. horned. But just butted, so she does not have any horns. Yes. We also bought two steers that year. They're gone. The steers are ma castrated males. We paid $300 a piece for the two steers that year. The price has gone up every year since. Those first two steers are now at their homes and other people's freezers. Our first bull, Killian, uh, we bought, he was registered, had good lines, he was A1, A2, and horned. Um, and we bought him to breed our one registered Dexter Temple, and we had a Jersey Greta. So we only had two cows to breed and only one was registered, so I was unwilling to invest a lot of money in a bull at the time. So Killian was a bargain, I think he was Nine hundred dollars and a hundred dollars in honey. Yeah, um, and and he did his job well here. Killian and Temple gave us this little black heifer calf here with the blue tag, Dr. Quinn. She's just what we'd want in a Dexter calf. She's petite, but she's got a nice straight back. Her legs are nice and square under her. She's got good body structure and. Hopefully, just like her mama, she should be a good breeder here on our farm. Year two, we decided to add more breeding females to our herd. So we brought home Jolene. She's done colored, yep, and she's A2A2 for milk proteins, and she's homozygous pulled. She came to us as a weaned heifer calf, so we got to work with her a lot when she was small, and she's, she's a good little cow. I've got high hopes when she calves for the first time this spring that she'll be our milk cow this summer. We paid $1,800 for Jolene. Hey, Joe. We are paying a, a more of a premium for those genetics. Mm -hmm. In your area, it might be different. This is just what we chose to focus on. So year two, we also, since we had one steer calf born on the farm, we purchased another steer calf here, this other done one, and he was $400. So year three, we invested big in a really nice bull. So uh, Mr. President here, we transported up from Tennessee and he cost us $3,000. Um, and he's got excellent lines, excellent structure. He's homozygous polled and has A2A2 milk genetics. So with him being homozygous polled, all the calves on our farm will be born. So we won't have to disbud any more calves, which is nice. He was also a show bull, came halter broke, halter trained, and very easy to, to manage. Yeah. Minus one time. <laughs> yeah, as a rule, he's very well behaved, which is why I was on board with paying big bucks for him. Since he's separated here, this is the most vocal he's been since he's been on the farm. So in addition to the bull, we also wanted to increase the number of females to justify the investment we'd made in the bull. So we bought Friar Rose here, came in a cow-calf pair with her mama, this little dun heifer here. And her mom is the tall black cow back there with Jolene. So we bought them as a cow-calf pair. Darby now is ready to calf probably in the next month or two with a calf out of Mr. President. Both A2A2 and... She's heteropolled. Heterozygous polled. Mom's horned. Mom is horned. So, and I think for the cow-calf pair we paid 3300 So $1,650 a piece. Mm -hmm. So I think her uh, Briar being pulled and then having the A2A2 jeans, 1650 is a pretty good price for her. Mm -hmm. uh, so last year we also bought two beef steers and those were $400 a piece. So we spent $800 in the two beef steers. I think she's hetero pulled. And she's at least hetero pulled, and she's just, but she's A2A2. Pippi here, this little red heifer, she's 
A2, A2, and I think she's heterozygous pole. Um, but she comes from a farm that we really admire here in Michigan. Um, and she's got excellent petite body structure, but nice straight back. And she's a good looking little calf and really sweet too. So we paid 1500 for Pippi here. So if you get started with Dexters and you're like me, you want one of each color and each size. So we bought Ladybug here. Ladybug is actually is from, I can't remember, she, she might have been born in Michigan, I can't really remember, but the farm that we got them from, they were originally from Michigan. But she is a chondro positive or chondro carrier Dexter heifer. So that means she has the dwarfism um, gene and she is uh, what's considered a short-legged Dexter. And she is A2A2 horned. She has was disputed, but she's got a skur. But she's valued at $2,500. I actually bartered for her and was able to get her cheaper because I had some Cooney Cooney pigs that we traded for. And then the last female that we bought uh, right here is Katinka. So she's, she's pulled in A1, A2. Oh yeah, so she's already calved before um, and she's been handled a lot and she's very friendly and easy to handle. She's probably the most friendly Dexter we have now mm -hmm. and she's also the most vocal. Yes. Next to Mr. President who has not re not been vocal up until uh, we moved him back down here and he can see all his future girlfriends. So this year, the only animals that we are purchasing are we're purchasing two more beef steers for 2025 beef. The reason why we're buying beef steers is because, well, we don't know what we're going to have as far as calves and we have a demand for the Dexter beef. So we're buying a couple more steers and these should be the last two steers that we purchase. I'm imagining this year I'll probably pay $500 a piece for the steers. <laughs> Currently we do have the three bred Dexters. We have Darby who's bred, Jolene and Temple, all bred to Mr. President. And depending on what we get, heifers or bull calves, the bull calves will probably 90% surely be turned into steers and then the heifer calves we will sell. So basically, in the words of Joe Exotic, we will never financially recover from this. <laughs> <laughs> Katinka and Ladybug should be bred for fall calves. So we should be able to sell their calves then in the spring if they're heifers or have them, uh, the bull calves be steers. So this year, Mr. President will be able to breed, what, a total of nine? Yeah. I think we will have a nine. total of nine breedable heifers and cows. All of the young stock that we bought last year will be able to bred, be bred, and the current cows that we have will be able to be bred. And, and then we also have our Jersey Millie who will be able to be bred this um, summer as well. So next year we should have nine calves born on the farm. So what's the best way to start a beef operation, breeding operation? If I had the money, I probably would have splurged it all and invested all that money in year one, if I could. But I'm not made of money and the farm had to make some money in order to be able to afford our breeding stock. Mm -hmm. So in total, with everything, the trailer included, we have spent $22,300, probably more with all the nickel and dime insulators and stuff like that. So $22,300 over the past three and a half years to get started with our Dexter beef and breeding no joke. operation here on a six acre farm. That doesn't include That does not feed. include any feed or anything else other than the cost of the animals and the basic infrastructure that you would need. Okay, so some considerations for when you're getting started is um, keeping in mind a timeline. So if you want calves right away, you could 
buy a cow that's already bred and ready to calf soon. Um, remember that cattle have a gestation period just like a human, so it'll take nine months. If you want a cow that is really easy to handle and you plan to milk her, then I recommend you buy a cow that's already a milk cow and has that training. Um, some other things to keep in mind is that a heifer cannot be bred for the first time until she's about 15 months old. So that's a lot of time to hang on to an animal and feed one and you have a lot invested in that relationship before she's even pregnant. And then once she's 15 months old and you get her bred, then it's another 9-10 months before a calf actually hits the ground. So, and so if that heifer calf has then a bull calf that you steer, then you could either sell that as a steer or raise it out for beef, which most people would. Then you have a minimum of two year grow out period for that steer calf. The first two Dexter steers that we had, one we butchered right around two years old, the other one was more two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. And the first one had a hanging weight of about 500 pounds and the second one, I believe it was 420, 430 pounds. So they're a smaller carcass, but premium beef. Good, so keeping that timeline in mind about when you need to start getting some money back from the animals versus how like how much you want to invest time-wise beforehand also without having to pay outright for the calves so a little bit of balancing we started with a little bit of both by buying some steer calves and also a bred cow to start with or bred heifer the other thing is in, here in michigan steer dexter steers are actually hard to find as well mm -hmm. that's the reason why i'm purchasing two more steers because I didn't don't know what we're having and they're hard to find and I wanted to jump on that as soon as I saw them available it's the same same breeder that we've been getting our steers from so depending on how much money you have in your bank account depending on how you how big you want to have as far as an operation goes you can either go big or go broke <laughs> <laughs> or you can either start small or go broke might be the better way to to uh to put it yeah so considering the amount of time it takes for a cow to calve uh, grow out a steer build your breeding stock we could crunch some numbers and figure out when we'll be profitable I don't think it's really gonna make us happy um, it'll probably be at least four years five years before we actually can profit from our, our beef heifer sales considering the amount of money we put in and again, that $22,300 was not including any feed, and that feed bill does not go away. So, and in in, if you watch the, that TV series Yellowstone, there was a scene in one of the seasons where they're considering stopping doing cow-calf pairs and then going to selling beef online. And the guy said, you basically, you, you just need enough money to keep them alive for two years before you can send them to market. <laughs> oh. Uh, even though we have a lot of money and it's a little bit scary to think about just A lot of money? I'll, let me finish the thought. <laughs> even though we have a lot of money invested there you in go, our that's Dexters, <laughs> and uh, it's a little scary to think about just how much we've put into these animals, uh, I'm, I'm really glad they're here. I think having the, the opportunity to be the, the self-sufficient, but also just to get to work with the animals. And I don't think even if we had if we won the lottery and had all the land and all the money we want, we'd still raise Dexters. I don't see us switching breeds. I'd probably no. have a couple more jerseys for pets. <laughs> but they're, they're great cattle. I'm glad they're a part of our lives and I think that eventually it's an investment that, that will pay off. Yeah, the people in the comments will say the payoff is our experience and the kids' lives experience growing up on the farm and all that stuff. And, you can make those comments. <laughs> <laughs> Our pocketbook. You're the one who keeps bringing home more. <laughs> Busted. But when we, we, we moved all of our calves out here, the heifers out here, and we moved Darby back here, we thought she might be due at the end of February because we bought her as possibly bred back. Due date's come and gone. She does have a calf. We did do pregnancy check, but... Everybody's back here now, and it, 
now that everybody's together, we we have a lot of cows. But when they're in a group like this, they, they look like we have a bunch. We do. We do. And the two, two 2025 steers are possibly coming next weekend. But we have two, two scheduled for July butcher dates and even. Well, they don't count. Those don't count. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so fencing and gates is probably your least amount of money that you'll need to invest. Depending on the type of fence you use, there's different ways you can do it, cheaper options. We chose the field fencing because we are on a somewhat busy road. We've got the electric barrier as well. I don't want cows getting out. I don't want cows touching my fence. So that's the, why we did it the way we did. Livestock trailer, again, you don't necessarily need it. If you're like us, then you'll end up purchasing more animals than what you need. Um, the chute system, definitely, you know, eventually you'll want, want something like that, depending on how many cows you have. And then the animals themselves, so. So in that, that uh, 22,000 ish investment, that is over a four year period of time. So I don't think I've ever, I think there might have been a few times we've had that much money in a bank account at one time and it was after we've sold a house. Yeah, before <laughs> we got into the next house. Before we got into the next house. We <laughs> briefly had that much money in our bank account. So it was an investment over a four year period of time and a continued investment because we're still feeding them. But anyway, little perspective on how we got started, uh, what it costs, maybe the prices of cows and fencing and materials and stuff like that is different in your area. Here in Mich northern Michigan, these are the prices we're paying. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.